Uh, welcome to this talk. My name is Nicole Perro, I'm one of the Moosta developers. This is really an introductory talk about Moosta. So we usually give talks which go very deep about this particular project, this particular project. This is a general talk about what you can do with Moosta and what the tools that we have now. Um, first of all, um, one of the key things about Moosta is in the language, is the practice, um, which uh, has a long history, was a bit out of fashion, but now with uh, Apple, Crypto, and Bison, is again very much question, is again very much possible to find, as I decided. Uh, well, what is Objective-C? Obviously it's a programming language. It's a straight superset of C, so you go C and you just add a few kind of extra uh, syntax and constructs you can use. Um, if you've got C code, you can just compile it as Objective-C code without any issues. Um, C libraries can be in and use mm -hmm. directly mm -hmm. Objective-C, so you've got you know, you can access all the OpenSSL or LibXML or all those libraries of uh, But you've got obviously some additional things you can do in Objective-C. You can obviously define class, implement methods, you can instantiate classes and objects, you can import them, all those. And then you've got a number of quite advanced things you can do with it. Uh, like categories where you have methods to existing classes at one time, selectors for the forwarding or forwarding issues from one object to the other issues. <coughs> so this is um, kind of a very quick example of Objective C just for some people have never seen it. Um, it it's actually a class, it's truncated at the end. Um, so it, kind of the beginning of the implementation of the class. That's the constructor method. We've got an instance method here. And the most interesting bit I wanted to show is that code is basically pure C. So as you see, actually we've got a bunch of pure C, which is very fast, which then is wrapped up into high level, structured, popular, you know, modern language. So why is it special? <laughs> For, for some developers, a uh, number of them in this room, for example, it's, it's quite a special language. Um, first of all, it's compatible with C stuff, so you can use all the C libraries that comes with your system, which is long. Um, it's quite simple to learn, to explain, to use. But I think that for me the key thing is it's kind of this hybrid you can see in small talk. So if you're using it as C, you can be as fast as C, you can write device drivers, you can do that stuff. If you use it more as motor, you can be more high level, more organized in your project, you can do very flexible advanced design patterns things. And if you're experienced, you can mix the two in the same program. So where you need speed, you kind of change your style to be more C-like, and where you can be more flexible, you change your style to be more smooth. Now, when we talk about Objective-C, how do you compile or, or use it? First of all, the, there are two mainstream compilers, which actually is the same, but it's kind of old. One is the Apple GCC, which is the, the compiler that ships with, with Apple. The other one is the Free Software Foundation GCC, which is the same compiler, but very shipped by the Free Software Foundation. Um, in terms of runtime, we've got two runtime libraries. So, <coughs> to actually use an Objective C program, you need, a, you need a runtime library, which is a small C library that you link into your, your program. Um, the original Objective C runtime was, was the next one, which now became the Apple one, and they'll keep changing it and improving it. There is also the GNU runtime, which is the one you get, for example, on Google Linux, which is the one should by default with a free software foundation uh, compiler. This is a different runtime, it does the same things, but it's fundamentally, it's a fundamentally different API. Some reasons are stupid, like the naming convention is completely different. This follows the new naming convention. This one follows more of a next step kind of naming convention. Other reasons have to do with how they're implemented. 
But if you're trying to write portable objectives, you need to know about this, this fact. Then the biggest issue with the language we can talk about is that password in Mac OS and the file introduce a new measure version of the language, which they call Objective C to zero. That's backwards compatible with your own Objective C. So if you write an Objective C one dot zero code, it still compiles with a new compiler, but actually they have a lot more features. Uh, some of those can be considered blocked by some <laughs> core objectives the um, developers, but some of them are actually very good or interesting. One is garbage collection, which actually the piece of information which you see in the time used to have many years ago and used to be used, then fallback kind of wasn't used that much anymore. Uh, nowadays, Apple introduced it in a different way. And we're actually working to bring them back to, to the new one time. But then they have new new syntaxes for tiling exceptions, stuff like that. We've got fast emulation, we've got properties, <laughs> which um, these things, uh, you get them on the Apple GCC on Mac OS 10.5 and above. You don't get them with the Free Software Foundation GCC. So if you're looking, I can't put that later. Uh, the last bit is obviously to actually use Objective-C, you need at least some core libraries. Uh, we've got two big um, families here, the Apple Cocoa ones and the Blue Step ones. But I'll come back to these later. Now, I just... Okay, so I was exactly saying this. When you when you trying to write portable Objective-C code, now, in this very moment, you should only use Objective-C 1.0 features because the 2.0 features are only on Apple 10.5. Nothing else supports it. So if you're doing Apple, you should avoid those. Um, again, on Apple, you probably want to buy garbage collection, even if that means you still use the OpenStack traditional reference counting. Luckily, this can be a big hit for some people. <laughs> Luckily, this is going to change because we're um, in a step is getting garbage collection working together. Finally, uh, when you access the Objective-C runtime, which you may want to do from time to time, you need to make sure you don't um, you don't link too much into one of the two implementations. The ideal thing is use some intermediate layer. And Bluestep actually, the Bluestep project provides one such layer that you can use both on Apple and and um, you know, step it's in the Bluestep base editions. Um, okay, so let's look at the frameworks. Um, Objective C originally originated in this company called Stepstones in the early 80s and was later acquired by the rights for the language were acquired by Nextlet, who started to use it as the main language in their next step operating system. They did their own work on it and until you reach this next step 3.0 this mythical super operating system um, which was based on Objective-C and the core frameworks were Objective-C frameworks. That, that thing was so good that a lot of other companies got interested into it, particularly Sun, and they decided to build kind of an open API based on that API, which is called OpenStack. And that was published as a public API that could be implemented in different systems to provide Objective-C libraries with the same, roughly the same API as the next step one. And that API is really good. You've got really good classes, really well designed, kind of a bit like looking to design pattern books. And all the right things is there. Um, obviously, they then uh, kept developing their platform, and the next version was obviously compliant with the API they published. The Gnusta project was started in 1995, which means almost 14 years ago, and it was supposed to be um, the new implementation of the OpenStack API. So obviously, well, I wasn't there at the time, but we <laughs> took Objective-C and, and started to basically clone, if you want, the next step in the OpenStack stuff. But obviously, looking particularly at that, at that API. Obviously, 
as you know, when Steve Jobs came back to Apple, he basically took open step and forced it into Apple, and that became Apple Proper, which has been developed a lot now. And but as you see, Apple Proper actually originated from here. And new step, which also went on, we've been developing for 14 years. They, they both originate from the same API. Now, obviously, I had to run this. Um, the, the iPhone, which is the latest thing from Apple, uh, does use it. It's an objective system. It's got frameworks that are very much inspired by Cocoa, even adapted to work on a mobile phone. So, the OpenStack specification, this is about how it, it's organized. You've got the operating system at the bottom, you've got the objective system time, and you've got foundation kit. Foundation kit is no graphical stuff. So you only actually depends on the operating system and on the objective system. Then you've got obviously the graphical, the windowing system that you've got on the operating system. And the application kit sits on top of all this graphical stuff and the non-graphical stuff. The foundation kit provides you with strings. The application key then provides you with buttons, windows, etc. The application obviously uses both of them. As I was saying, the foundation kit in this bit provides the non graphical stuff. Um, I just wanted to give a rough idea to people who are not familiar with it, what you can find in this. Uh, there's a lot of stuff. First of all, you've got the root objective C classes. You've got the basic data classes, strings, numbers, data. Uh, you've got collection classes, you can, and you've got a lot of other stuff, particularly for controlling the execution of your problem, doing IO notifications or realization. You can also do distributed objects between different processes. The application kit contains the graphical stuff. So, first of all, windows, panels, menus, and then all the controls, the buttons you can have, the tables, that you normally have in graphical GUI applications, but also has a lot of events, responders, things that you can actually uh, extend quite a lot to do new controls and new, new things. So this is how, so that, that was OpenStack, like the general case. And this is how it's actually done in Cocoa. So the operating system is now Apple, Darwin, USD, whatever. That's the, their, their own operating system, uh, sorry, their own objective system, and the Apple one. You've got Cocoa Foundation Kit, the Cocoa Application Kit. If you look at New Step, that's quite similar. You've got the operating system, which in this case could be any, because that's the whole. But it does actually work on a very large number of systems. You've got the object, new objective system, and New Step based on top. You're not stuck exactly the same as on Apple. Uh, for the GUI part, because the graphical system, <coughs> it should be able to run on any, any operating system, so the graphical stuff could be really different. You've got an intermediate layer that uh, is the one which is really specific to the graphical system, and that's the called the Booster Backend. Booster backend. Then we've got Booster GUI on top, which builds the applicate, provides the application kit on top of Booster Base and Booster Back, so it doesn't contain any platform specific code. So if you're looking at portability, just as to get an idea, Apple Corp unfortunately only runs on Apple. GNU Step runs, first of all, GNU Linux, which is where it was originally most developers work with GNU Linux. It works on all the various BSD Linux and also all the other Linux systems like Solaris, etc. <coughs> and finally, there's quite a mature in some parts a bit unfinished in the GUI part, but Microsoft Windows actually actually works. Um, so if you're if you're trying to write your code so that you can use it on all platforms, to to get the Apple platform you need to support Apple for Core, obviously. To get all the other platforms like Windows, etc., you need new set. And the only real way is you need to stick to the OpenStep API because that's where the two APIs are more at most of things in common. You should avoid the platform specific stuff. It's particularly hard in Apple because they provide a lot of things. A lot of things. And then they don't tell you that this will is actually from OpenStep and this is not. 
So you end up just calling your own stuff, which then doesn't work when you go to their platform. So you, you need to avoid stuff like car pollution, car sound, or emission, etc. Carbon, big time. On Blue Step, uh, most of the additional libraries, there are a number of them. I usually provide them separate frameworks. They are LGPL or free stuff that you can actually port on Apple. So in some way you can use them, but particularly when you're using the application kit or the foundation kit, you need to keep a, be aware of GNU step extensions that might not actually exist on Apple. Okay, so that's a very <laughs> very trivial example of an object C program. It's obviously portable, it just uses the foundation to the API. That's the standard foundation call, that's the syntax for a static string object. So how do you how do you actually build this this thing with different platforms? If you're on Apple Mac OS X, the official way to do it is use export. So but this great GUI builder is no, it's not a GUI builder, sorry, the great the great programming ID and the development environment that covers everything in the, the files. Unfortunately, it only works for Apple, obviously. The stuff you build, and you can only use it on Apple and only build it on Apple. It's got its own files, uh, so it saves on the project or the relationship between your files to compile and then its own files. It's great, <laughs> it's a really good tool. Uh, it's hard to work with developers whose other platforms, like if you've got code that you want and someone is developing it on Apple and someone else is developing it on new Linux. It can be quite hard to just share because uh, the people on new Linux can't even compile. On the first step, um, there's another way, there's this program called Project Center. Project Center is basically, it's very similar to Xcode, in fact it's kind of a clone of Xcode if you want. Um, it works on all the platform that Krista supports, obviously. Technically, I suppose you could even compile and run it on Apple. I'm not sure many people have done that, but it's certainly possible. It's kind of lagging a few features, particularly if you compare it with Xcode, which is kind of this marvelous, super bloaty thing that has everything. Um, the way it works to save your projects is it uses its own files, again, like um, Xcode, but to actually build the software, it generates these things called BlueMate files, and that gives you the third way you had to actually build your code. Which is using this thing, which is called the step make, which um, which is basically a make file library that is available for the step. It's actually the official building system for the step. This is how you would build the, the, the program. You write this this file, call it new make file, and then you just type make, and thing does the for you. It, it does. You don't have to change anything to build on Windows or to build on Linux. And actually, it also works on Apple, where it will build Apple Cocoa stuff. So you could just have that make file, that source code, put it in a directory, and then you just need this little bit of make file library that you can use on all the platforms, and you can immediately compile everywhere. So it's, it's very complete. That, that this does everything you want, whoever we want to do. <laughs> the files are very editable, easy to edit, very portable. Unfortunately, this is not an ID. It's not a point and click thing. You just actually have to edit this part. So, in terms of just you know the kind of scenario we're looking at, um, on this axis we got portable on this end and non-portable on the other. On this axis we got text files at the bottom and GUI stuff at the top. So Xcode lies exactly in that spot. Is not portable at all and is very graphical. Because the make lies at exactly opposite corner. It's text files, you know, I mean, but it's very portable. Project Center um, is graphical. I put it just a little below Xcode because I think it's not as finished and as slick as Xcode, but eventually it will kind of go up as we spend more time developing it. It's quite portable. Because it generates new set make new make files, it's almost as portable as that one. There's the final thing, which is this tool provided by new set, which is called PBX Build, which will actually 
read your X code, uh, PBX, I don't remember the name, your X code uh, proprietary files and generate new made files from that. So if you have your project in Xcode, you can run that tool and it will generate new made files that you can use to compile it on, on other platforms. The new made files may need a little bit of tweaking occasionally. They walk out of the box. Okay. In, most case, in most cases, they work out of the box. Sure. Uh, obviously, the problem is you can't go back. <laughs> so uh, if you're developing an X, if you've got two developers, one on Xcode, one on Linux, they're sharing the stuff. The Xcode one will make changes and you run PXP. The other guy can build it but can't actually change anything because he can't change the, the Xcode stuff. Now, there's more stuff just for that, well, for that small program, that's it. But if you're doing bigger programs, there's more issues you're going to encounter. One is just loading and locating your source files. Uh, if you remember, GNU Step supports Windows which means you can get those Windows parts around with the horrible things. Um, supports different layouts on, on Unix itself, so you can have a more next step, next step like the file system layout where you've got system domain, local domain, or you can use the standard HHS layout. Um, it can get really hard to find things on the right location, like if you want to load a bundle, you've got your main program, you want to load an additional bundle, it can get really hard to find it in this unless you use the open step API. Because that API which provides stuff like this bundle and this part of the is that one will work on the machines on Apple, it will work on the new set, will work on Windows and Unix, etc. One final tip is just the new step has got these things which is tools with resources which um, are not available on Apple, so just plug it in. I mentioned very briefly this thing. People coming from Apple usually, uh, when they build uh, a library, actually they build a framework. The framework is a great thing, it's a shared library in a directory with all these resources attached to it. The problem is, if you try to do this on, on other platforms like on Windows, on many Unix, etc., it's really hard because the, the linker expects to find all the libraries in the directory. And, and this thing breaks it because the shell libraries are actually inside the subdirectory. So to use that, well, Apple obviously has got a change their own linker, it's their own system, they do whatever they want, and the linker will actually go in the subdirectory. Everywhere else, to use that has to emulate frameworks, which it does mostly using symlinks. So it just creates the frameworks, but when you install it, it actually creates a symlink to the shell library in the standard location. That's usually works, or Linux works really well, but sometimes it can be inefficient and appropriate and not really that great. So you have to keep in mind this kind of tricky issue. Uh, one thing you may want to do if you're really writing an application, sooner or later you'll end up that you've got a bunch of code and you just want to have that code on Apple and that code on Linux. Uh, it's quite easy. There's this uh, preprocessor defined code Linux. If it's the time you're on Google set, if it's not, you're on Apple. So that's a pretty easy way of uh, differentiating code. Um, final thing is Google set provides some macros that are used everywhere inside the Google set and in many projects that use Google set, like assign, release, release, copy, and these things, which are used for um, memory management. Um, if you want to use them because you like them, or if you're porting something from Google set, they find this. The only thing you have to do is get this Lucid of H file, this one in Renaissance, we, we, talk, we talk about that later, and you, you just include it if step is not defined, and all those macros will start to make sense on, on Apple as well. Okay, so now we get to the actual to the hard part, which is if your program actually has a graphical user interface. Um, now, technically, the OpenStack API has got enough functionality that you can create GUIs with it. So if you just stick to the OpenStack API and you just write all your GUIs in code, which most people don't want to do, but we'll talk about that later, you just create I don't know, all your buttons using NS button or locking and things and all that, it should, it should actually work. In fact, it does work, except for one very horrible problem. 
which is that on Apple it's impossible to create a menu for your application using the OpenStack API. Because if you can free to search on the web, well to do it. You find at a certain point you have to call stack Apple menu that black method, which is not part of OpenStack, so it's not actually available on the user or it doesn't do anything. But the worst thing is it's not even declared in the public header. It's, it's pilot stuff. So you need to provide your own category supplying with the blah blah blah. So obviously we hope that will change in the future, but at the moment that's a bit tricky. So the solution I suggest um, is generally to write a menu call for Apple and a menu call for the stuff. Uh, there's also another reason, which is that uh, the, the layout, if you're writing an Apple application, you really want to, it to be native, and Apple has got strict guidelines for where you put things, where is the about program, where is the preferences, where is the quit, where is the info, the help, etc. The new step has actually still following a bit the next step tradition is what the items in different location. So um, you get into a bit of a thing that you may want to have different menu layouts for the two platforms. So because of that and because of this pilot Apple thing, you're probably better off writing two different menu things. The good news is that in your program you have got just one menu. So it's not too bad. Now, this is a, an example. An example of uh, a GUI that works perfectly well on both platforms, just using code. Um, this is a small game I have on many years ago. It was originally for the stuff only. Just using the OpenStep API, all the GUIs created in code, except for this menu, which is, uh, no, sorry, including the menu, which though has different pieces of code for Apple and OpenStep. It's been using Instep Make, so it's kind of the most basic way of doing things and most portable though. If you're looking for the, the reason I mentioned it is also if you want to look at an example of something that really just works and all the things, you can go in and look it up. So this is this is it running on um, I would say that's the Linux with Window Maker. And that's it running on Windows. Again using Instep. You will notice the next step like menu which doesn't really fit with Windows, but that's something that uh, which the other people are working on. So new step is now support has got now an option to have the menu here. More like Windows. It's not finished yet, so I didn't want to spoil the screen with some something that wasn't good. And this is it, the same exactly the same thing around the Apple. Um, Yeah, you see the menu is kind of different. Quit is here, but in this, it would appear here if you were to do exactly the same. The setting here, it's obviously at the end of this, this window there. Uh, okay, so we get to the more to the more exciting bit, which is that nobody actually creates their rules in code. Everyone wants to use some better way of doing it. Uh, on Apple Mac OS, Mac OS, there's a great way of doing it, which is this interface builder program that is supplied with Apple. That's a brilliant tool. It's very usable. It's drag and drop. You drag and drop in control. It's your size down and print. Then you connect to it. It's brilliant stuff. The only problem is obviously they only care about Apple, so that thing is going to only work on Apple. It only runs on Apple. Um, it saves you in Windows into these files called NIMS. And NIMS actually are just a serialization of, of the window. So you take the window, there's a lot of objects in there. They just serialize everything into a file. And that serialization, um, since they're only supporting Apple, includes a lot of stuff like fonts, colors, sizes, etc. That may not make any sense anyway on another platform. Um, just mentioning a few things that you know, really satisfied me totally with this. For many people, it's not a huge problem, but the layout is pretty old compared to what you just can do with either GT or GTK. In that, this kind of static layout, you lay things out, that's how it looks. You've got minimal outer size and behavior thing, but it's not that much. And if you want to translate it to, to another language, you have to take the nib, open it up, change all the strings in a new language, and then save it. And for every language, you need a different nib. Obviously, the problem is in different languages the strings change size, so you need more 
clever out of the yacht kind of thing that could actually resize the window to, to be able to do it with a single name. But for many, I mean, if you're looking for perfect design kind of uh, perfection, that's not actually a problem, that's a feature. It means uh, you go into each language and make sure the interface looks great in that language. On the roof step, there is this, again, a very good tool, which is basically a clone interface builder for the set. So this thing, that, that's a screenshot, that's a video I was creating, that's a pilot where you plug the things, that's an inspector, and this is where you connect things to your, your application. Um, it's basically identical to interface builder. Um, again, it's got its own, its own files, uh, which are called Boeing files in this case. Um, it works on all the platforms that can use step support, so you can use this in Windows, you can use this in Windows, Linux, etc. You can probably use it in Apple, it would be quite fun to do that. Um, I've got more or less the same pause and points of interface building, so it's a great visual tool, it's very intuitive, very kindly, very quick to build things. I've got static layout issues in my head. Uh, one, one thing which is, which is a key thing in terms of portability is if you create a new file of interface builder, you can actually import it into GORM. That's a new feature that has been worked on recently. Once you import it, it doesn't necessarily display perfectly. You may need to tweak things a bit around, but it gives you... Yeah, the menu, <laughs> But it gives you a very good starting point. So, um, you don't actually have to start from scratch redoing all your windows, you just import the new files and edit them. Of course, if you're trying to keep uh, the problem running your network and your booster in this way, you're going to have kind of a hard time because um, if you make any changes here and then you make changes to the nibs, they can end up getting out of sync. Okay, on the booster, there's one other way to do different things which. Um, is different. Um, again, it's a good like to make. It's all test based. Uh, you write this kind of XML, very simple, very easy to work for. This create, will create a window with a button. <coughs> That's all you need to do. Um, the format is well designed, works everywhere, works in Apple and works in Windows. Um, unfortunately, it's quite complete, but people often complain that some classes like toolbars or this or that. I'm not actually available here. Uh, it doesn't have a good reader, um, which is kind of big cons. Uh, there's quite a few pros though. These files are really editable, really portable. You can just copy them from Apple to Google Step, edit them, copy them back, whatever you want. It does support out of the yard using boxes and grids like other big frameworks, very well done. And it can load up translations at one time, so you can have one file and then when it's displayed, you load up the, the Russian translation and you just adjust it, it looks good. Again, this is kind of the, this is kind of the universe of creating GUIs and open step without code. I want to end again with an interface builder, which is not portable, but it's great, all graphical, etc. At the other end, you've got Renaissance, which is only text files. It's very portable, it's designed to be portable. We've got Gorm, which is again graphical, it's really good. It is a fire with interface builder. It's more portable than interface builder. At least you can target more than just one platform. And it's tribal so supposed to be able to import files. Okay. So that was one of uh, Gunstem's <laughs> um, ideas was to build an actual good builder for Renaissance which would use these files and then would kind of provide um, all of that, the graphical thing, and it would use portable files, so you would be able to create your, um, your GUIs on Apple, or um, you know, step and just move around, and you can even just go in and edit the file if you are on the other terminal that day or something. Okay, well, um, that's about it, about the state of the news we have, etc. Um, if you're interested in Objective-C, obviously we need your help. Um, it's hard to maintain and grow free class platform Objective-C thing 
Apple keeps adding things and we need to always be a bit like catching up. There's a lot you can do, you can try out frameworks, give feedback, provide patches, write application, port applications back and forth just to convince them to upload vice versa. I think you forgot one time, but in the meanwhile, liberal is adapted to the system, so you can just load the files, so you don't need to report. Okay. Of uh, course, you can not have the adjustments you do yeah. in Go, and you have a manual problem, which yeah. you also, it works. It's just very ugly, but for an initial port, you can just sure. forget the test. Was it tough? Yeah. Okay. Any questions? Can you say a few words about uh, your experience with Java and why you're such a fan of Objective C? I think that's uh, an important point. Well, uh, yeah, I think I actually made my point at the beginning. I think Objective C is great because you can uh, you can write a, re a device driver for a mobile phone in Objective C. Uh, it will work even very more CPU, etc. Java does require a lot of memory usually. Um, spring classes in Java, in my opinion, are too slow. The language is not too horrible. It's very much inspired by Objective C, I think. It's quite too good, actually, for some applications. Um, but in many cases, Objective C is just very natural. More questions? What about full screen applications and OpenGLs? Or, um, you can write an Xcode to full screen applications like games or whatever. Oh, using OpenGL, can you call them using the first step to other platforms? Very good question, and uh, I don't have a complete answer. Uh, well, one thing for sure um, you can probably use OpenGL in the step. I'm not sure about that. The C library, you can definitely use it in the step. I'm not sure how we actually handle the full screen thing. Do we have full screen support? Because the kind of magic that supports displaying images full screen. Okay. So you can have a window taking up full screen without decoration. There may be issues with different window managers because some window managers exist yeah. putting stuff on top. But, but with OpenGL and both, I don't know. Okay, it's so work. It should work. It's open because we have an OpenGL view that we can write in, so you can just fill your full screen window with an OpenGL view. That's it, really. So it's something like a screen saver view being written in OpenGL and brought from Apple. Yeah, I think, I think so. Yeah. Fine. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions? Um, is there any reason or something to make uh, the menu with the buttons and the windows look more native? Yeah. More that, that was one of the subject of which I talked a few hours ago. There's, uh, sorry. There, there's uh, an effort in order to add teams to the blue set. Yeah. Uh, there's an effort in going to add teams to the blue set. Which is something which I presented a couple of years ago, uh, hours ago. <laughs> <laughs> um, which means that, like, obviously, as you saw, like in this, in this screenshot, this doesn't look completely out of place because this is a, this perfect map step look from the 94 running on Windows XP. Um, the, there's no work going on to make it possible to change the colors, hiding images, changing fonts, uh, appearances, even behavior of things like having the menu uh, like in the window. Um, ongoing with the new step. In fact, here, if you look, it says cool thing in the new step. Uh, if you click on that, you can actually change that thing. But because it's a bit experimental, I didn't want to spoil the screenshot again. <laughs> um, I, I, it's not finished, but it's really going quite well because we reach and other people are putting a lot of work into it. So I, in fact, in terms of the new step, the new support to Windows, a lot of stuff uh, just works out of the box, um, and that is probably one of the key things that Steam is doing, just making it look more automatic. But it's um, it's an ongoing effort.
And I expect to see very good results in the next few months. Richard? No, I think that's fair enough. I think it's going to take more than a few months unless somebody can help. But yeah, what we have is something that will do. Well, we do quite a lot of things. We make things really look radically different if you want. What we lack are the methods to control behaviours. Yeah. Um, so to, to radically change the position of things. But if you want to change colours, if you want to change what things look like without moving controls around, it's already there. And we've got some moving controls around to demonstrate this moving scroller button so we can change which side of the window a scroller appears on that kind of thing. Cool. Any more questions? Um, I thought there should be a mention about there is actually a, a way to combine objectives to with data and there is a JIGS library. Yeah. Uh, which can be used to Yeah, sure. Okay. Yes, so there are a number of bridges to Objective-C to other languages. The one you refer to is object to, to mix Objective-C and Java, which, by the way, I actually wrote myself that bridge. Uh, so, yes, you can mix the two languages together. That's not portable at all, though. If you go on Apple, it, it get, things get really hard, because it can kind of depends on the actual Java virtual machine implementation, blah, blah, blah. It's using GNI, so should be reasonably portable if blah blah blah, but it's kind of uh, hard. Isn't the main problem there that Apple link in various frameworks that will conflict with yeah. libraries you wanted to link in elsewhere in your object to see code? Yeah. So they, they've linked stuff into Java that causes trouble. I suppose if you've got a non app Java implementation, it could work. Yeah. It would work. Yeah. But then you also have the next step <laughs> one time. So there, there's a few issues, but yes, but there are other, there's step two, I think, which is a project to provide scripting capabilities, in this case to boost them. Again, it allows you to use a number of languages. Uh, the Italy guys have got a completely separate project to use more talk like, actually they, I think they compiled more talk into Objective-C code, basically. Um, there's, the, the, there's a Ruby bridge, stuff like that. But all of these can have portability issues, obviously. Um, more questions? Okay. Well, thank you very much.